Hi there, and welcome to The Complete Picture. I'm your host, Julianne Cost. In this episode, we're going to focus on the new features of Adobe Bridge. Some of you might remember that Bridge originated as the file browser in Photoshop 7. Since then, we've added hundreds of new features satisfying a multitude of customer requests. In this release, the team has dramatically improved three key areas, speed, stability, and usability. So with that in mind, let's begin our tour. The first time that you launch Bridge, it's going to ask you if you want to launch Bridge at login. And I would suggest that you do this. You can always change it in your preferences later on by going to the Bridge menu and then Preferences, or on Windows, going under the Edit menu, and then choosing Preferences. In the Advanced area, here's where you would unclick to start Bridge at Login. But personally, I love to have it immediately accessible, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that on. All right, once Bridge is launched, I think you'll notice a new look and feel to the application. Let's go ahead and start in the upper left here. You'll notice that we have some backwards and forward buttons that can come in handy when you're navigating. To the right of that, we have the Go to Parents or Favorites folder. This will also help to navigate up the file structure, and it also takes you to any of your favorites that you have stored in the Favorites panel. So you don't always have to have your Favorites panel showing. You can actually close it and still access your favorites from the list here. To the right of that, we have our Recent Files icon, which is going to help you navigate to either reveal all of your recent files, or your recent files that you've opened in Photoshop, or any of the other Creative Suite applications that you have installed. One of the nice things is that if you select Recent Adobe Photoshop Files, not only does Bridge show you those files, but it'll also generate the necessary folder structure over here in the folders area. So that when you go and you're looking at other images and other folders, you can quickly go back and look at your recent Photoshop files. You can also use the list to clear your recent files and clear your recent folders. And the number of recent folders that's listed here is also controlled in your preferences. But this time, it's under the general preferences, the number of recent items to display. All right, to the right of that, we have some more task-based icons. I'm going to skip those for right now and move over here to the right to the workflow area. I can see that we have three workflows listed. If I want to reveal more, I can click on this bar and drag to the left. Now, depending on the resolution of your monitor, you might not be able to see all of the workspaces that we ship by default, in which case you can use the downward pointing triangle here to select one of the workspaces that you want to use. You can also reorder the workspaces by clicking on them and then dragging them in the workspace bar area. If you can't see the workspace that you want to drag, if you right mouse click between two workspaces, you can then select one from the list and it will insert it to the right of where you've clicked. That's a right mouse click on Windows. That would be the control click on a Mac. And of course, if you've rearranged any of your palettes, you can always save out your own workspace using the new workspace option. Searching has also become much faster and much more efficient. Let me go ahead and navigate back a folder or two so that we're looking at the interior shots here. If I want to search, for example, on a keyword, I can type in chair and I can decide whether or not I want to search using Bridges Search or Spotlight Search or if I was on Windows using Windows Search. If I search on the current folder, Bridge will look in the folder that I have active here, but it will also look in any subfolders. So I'll tap the return key, and that will show me all of my images that have the keyword chair. If I want to refine this search, I can click on the new search button here, and then I can add another search criteria. So in this case, I want to search on two keywords, the first one being chair and the second one being table. Now, as far as my results, I don't want to match if any criteria are met. Instead, I want to use if all criteria are met, meaning that the document that I'm searching for must contain both the keyword chair and table. I'll select Find, and now you can see that Bridge has refined my search. While we're here, I want to point out that what I can see now, as far as my breadcrumbs in the path area, 
is that I'm looking at a search result, meaning that Bridge has put together all of the images that it's found in like a temporary folder, and it's displaying that. If I want to navigate back to interiors, I simply click on that in the path. Excellent. To the right of the search area, we have a very small icon here to switch to compact mode. This is very convenient if you're using Bridge with a lot of other applications in the suite because, for example, I could click on an image and just drag and drop it to that application and it would open it up. All right, let's go back to full screen and talk about these icons right here. Now, this first icon will allow you to browse very, very quickly because it's going to use the embedded thumbnail in the image. So if I had like 500 images that I was trying to look at really quickly, I would click on this icon so that Bridge would show me the thumbnail as quickly as possible. However, if I was more concerned with higher quality, I would choose to either browse using high quality or high quality on demand. If I have a little bit more time, I'm going to choose always use high quality. Now, when I choose the always use high quality, it might take a little bit more time for Bridge to render those files, but they're going to be color managed. And in this case, if I'm working with DNG files or any raw files, we will actually render those raw files so that you get a more accurate preview. That last option that we saw here, the generate 100% previews, this can be very handy because it's going to speed your loop and zoom operations although it might take a little bit more disk space and it might take a little bit more time in the initial processing. There's another option as well and that's back in the preferences. So I'm going to return one more time to the advanced preferences. There's an option to generate monitor size previews. This can be extremely handy if you've got really large files and you don't really want to render them at 100% because that would be too large, but you want to render them at something a little bit larger than Bridge's default rendering. So you can turn that on, click OK, and if you have those large files, we'll go ahead and render them somewhere between the basic rendering of Bridge and 100%. OK, to the right of that, we can quickly filter on the most popular attributes. So for example, if I just want to see my one star images, or if I want to see my two or more star images, very, very quickly to access that. To the right of that, we can choose how we want to sort our images. Do we want to sort by file name or type? You can also choose to sort by a custom sort order by simply clicking and dragging your images to reorder them. The chevron here to the right will either toggle you from ascending to descending or descending to ascending order. Of course, you can rotate your images. And this little icon, this is actually going to open a recent file. A minute ago when we were talking about looking or revealing all of our recent files, this will simply display your recent files here in Bridge. If you use the icon on the right here, it will actually open those files in Photoshop. You can create a new folder as well as delete an image, all using the icons here. So I think you can see that while not a lot of this is new functionality, it's much, much easier to access the functionality that we had before so that you don't spend a lot of time looking through different menus trying to find things. Now that functionality is just a button click away. Moving to the lower left, let's just take a moment and look at the filter panel. You might notice that there are a lot of different options to filter on, and these options can now be controlled by using the flyout menu. So, if, for example, you never filter based on aperture value, you can uncheck that so that it is no longer part of the list here. All right, in the lower right-hand corner, we have our thumbnail slider that we've had before, but one of the requests that we had was to be able to see either an entire image or none of the image, meaning that people didn't want to see these thumbnails of half an image. So to the right of the thumbnail slider, we now have the ability to lock our thumbnails to a grid so we'll never see half of an image thumbnail. And if I use the keyboard shortcut Command plus to zoom in or Command minus to zoom out, you can see that it's keeping all of my thumbnails to a grid. That would be Control plus or Control minus to zoom in and out on Windows. To the right of that, we have the ability to view our content area in detail mode like we had before and also in list mode. 
One of the greatest new features about list mode is that if you scroll through to see different items, you will notice that the thumbnails actually stay in place. So that was a very, very heavily requested feature that I'm glad to see that we got in there. You can also reorder what you see in list mode. So I can just drag and drop to create a custom order. I can also right mouse click and choose from the list here. I can close a column, insert a column, and choose which column. I can size my columns, and I can always reset it to the column defaults. I can use the chevron here if I want to sort by ascending or descending order. Excellent. I think that gives us a good overview of most of the changes to the interface. Now let's take a look at some of these more in-depth task-based icons. The first one, Get Photos from Camera, will enable you to download images. The first time you launch it, Bridge will ask you if you want the downloader to automatically launch whenever a camera or card reader is connected. If Bridge is the default way in which you download your images, then I would definitely suggest that you say yes here. You can always change this option later in the preferences. So for now, I'll click yes. We'll get the photo downloader dialog box. I'll click on advanced so that I can see thumbnails of my images here. And just two things to point out. One, one of the great things about Adobe Downloader in Bridge is that I would be able to see any of my movie files if I was taking video with my digital camera. And I can use any of the file info metadata templates that I've created and saved. So although it looks like really I can only add two things here, the creator and the copyright, that's actually not true. If I go into file info and create and then save a metadata template, that becomes accessible here on the list. So for instance, I can go ahead and apply all of my copyright information and my contact information when I import these files. All right, I don't need to do that now. Let's go ahead and move on to the next item, which I absolutely love. So this will take me to review mode, which is a new feature. It also is where you can quickly access batch rename and file info. But let's look at review mode for a minute. The keyboard shortcut is Command B or Control B on Windows. So before we go into review mode, let's go ahead and select all of the images that we want to review. I just did a Command A or Control A on Windows to select those all. And then I'll use Command B or Control B. And what we have here is like a carousel view. And I can use my right arrow to move from one image to the next. And the great thing about this, you'll notice how fast it is. In fact, look at how fast it can go. That's because we're using hardware acceleration here. So not only can I look at my images, but I can also rate my images or label my images. So for example, if I want to give this three stars, I can tap the three key. Now, depending on your preferences, you might need to use the command key or the control key on Windows when you tap the three key. But I've actually gone into my preferences and turned that off. I just I prefer if I want one through five stars to just tap one through five. And if I wanted to label this, for example, yellow, I can just tap the seven key. So not only can you label your images and rate your images, you could also remove your image from the grouping that you're looking at. So for example, if I don't like this image, I'll use the down arrow in order to remove it from what I'm looking at. Same with this one. I might not like that one. Then I'll move through and just remove the other ones that I don't want to be reviewing. If I come across a raw file, either a raw file or a DNG file like what I'm using here, if I tap the R key, the review mode will actually launch me into Camera Raw where I could go in and make some changes. For example, I might want to set my black point, give this one a little more exposure, a little more contrast, and also a little bit more clarity. I might also decrease the vibrance. Once I've got my image adjusted, when I click Done, you'll notice that it'll take me right back to review mode and show me those changes that I've made in Camera Raw. Of course, you don't have to remember all those keyboard shortcuts. I can go left and right with the arrows. I could use the down arrow to remove it from what I'm reviewing. Over here, we have a loop icon. So let's say, for example, I want to look at this image. I can just click on it. It brings it to the foreground. And then I click in the image in order to magnify that area. I can also zoom in even further using Command Plus 
or Command minus to zoom out. Of course, that's Control plus or Control minus on Windows. If you have one of the new Macs that supports gestures, Photoshop CS4 and Bridge CS4 also support those gestures. So what you might want to do is go to your preferences and add a keyboard modifier so that you could bring up that loop without actually making a change to the image. All right, excellent. I'm going to tap the escape key, although I am bypassing this little icon right here, which is a collection icon, which we'll get to in just a moment. So the reason that I tapped escape is because some folks don't want that carousel view. They just want their images to come up in review mode, in which case if I just tap the space bar, we'll get a full screen. Again, we're using hardware acceleration here to view the images very quickly, full screen, so we can go through. I'm just using my right arrow. You can use your left arrow to go back. Again, you can rate and rank while you're in this full screen view. All right, I'll escape back here, and let's change this to look at thumbnails as opposed to a list view. All right, excellent. Okay, so since I just mentioned collections, let's go ahead and talk about them. There are two different kinds of collections in Bridge, and they have been completely overhauled. The two kinds of collections are either user-defined, which are displayed in blue, or smart collections, which are displayed in red. Now, both of these collections are virtual, and they can contain any type of files from any number of folders. So this is a terrific advantage, right? If I want some images from this folder and some images from this folder and some images from this folder to all be in one collection, I can do that now without actually physically moving those files on the hard drive. So let's do this. Let's go to my infrared collection, and I really like this image and this image and this image. So I'm going to select those images, and I want to put those into a collection. You'll see there's two icons down here. I've got my new collection, that's the user-defined one, and the smart collection. Let's start with the new collection. And yes, I want to include the selected files in the new collection because I went to that trouble of selecting them, so I'll click yes. Here's my new collection. Let's just go ahead and call this portfolio. And now let's use our back button because I might want to go to some other folders and select some images that I like, and I'll just drag them into that portfolio collection. So now when I click on portfolio, you can see that I have five images here from two different folders. Of course, I haven't really duplicated those files, right? They're not, I haven't made duplicates on disk. All I've done is I've told Bridge to make this virtual portfolio, which is really like just pointers to these files on my desktop. Okay, let's make the other kind of collection. I'm going to click on the back button there, and this time I'm going to create a smart collection. And you can see with the smart collection, I get to define certain criteria. So a very basic smart collection would be something like, let's make a rating that is greater than or equal to one star. So that would be a very simple smart collection. I'll choose save. We have my new smart collection. Let's go ahead and put ghost town and then one star and we'll add a little plus there. So that means that it's one star or greater. And how many images did we find? We found 26 images here. It's looking inside the interiors and all of the subfolders. But now I realize, oh, I really wanted it to look inside of the ghost town, the topmost folder, and look at all of the subfolders there. So let's make a change to that. I can do so by either clicking the Edit button down here in the lower left-hand corner, or it might be easier just to use the one here in the upper right-hand corner of our display area. And now I'm going to navigate not to interiors, but up one folder to the ghost town, and make sure that my smart collection is going to include all subfolders. And if I have large folders with many, many images in it that I may not have browsed, I might want to include the non-indexed files as well. I'll go ahead and choose Save. And now you can see I have a lot more images. In fact, I have 60 items now because Bridge has created the smart collection that's looking at all of my one-star images in all five of these subfolders of Ghost Town. And the cool thing is, if I decide that this image really isn't worthy, I demote it by tapping the zero key, which will get rid of the star. I decide that one's not worthy, and neither is that one. So I make a bunch of changes to the ratings. 
I can go ahead and click on the blue icon here for my smart collection. It will rerun the search criteria and you can see that it's automatically taken those images out. Likewise, if I add additional images, for example, if I go to the mine folder and I decide, wow, this is a great image and give it one star, we return back to our collection and we scroll down here, you'll be able to see that that mine image has been added. I can also add these collections, whether they're smart collections or user-defined collections, it doesn't matter. I can add them to my favorites, which will add them to my favorites panel. Remember now, we hid that earlier because I also have access to all of my favorites right here. Excellent. Now I'll select an image here so that we can very quickly take a look at the file info dialog box. You'll notice here that a few additional panels have been added and in fact we have made these flash base panels so that any developer can develop their own flash base panel to be inserted in here. If you can't see all of the tabs across the top, you can use the right arrow here to either scroll through or you can move quickly to a specific panel by selecting it from the list here. We also have the option to import and export and if I show the templates folder you'll see that we're now storing the metadata templates inside the library in application support and the very cool thing about this is that they are now accessible to all of the applications across the suite so it's going to make it very easy to apply file info while you're in Bridge or you can apply file info while you're in Photoshop or any of the other Creative Suite applications. Okay, returning back to Bridge, let's take a quick look at the next icon. This is the Open and Camera Raw icon. Now, why do we have this? Because in previous versions, it was a little bit confusing and there were like two different places, I think, that you had to set your preferences. Now, it's very, very easy. If I move to a folder like my infrared folder, for example, I have some JPEG files in here. If I want to open these in the camera raw dialog box, I don't have to set any preferences anymore. Now all I have to do is click on the open in camera raw and it will open those JPEG files or TIFF files, if I have TIFF files selected, into Adobe Camera Raw so that I can make use of all of the panels at one time here and apply all of those changes that I want to make. The new output icon here gives us a choice to output either to PDF or to a web photo gallery. You can access the output panel either by clicking on this icon or you can use the workspace that we have defined. So for example, if I want to create a PDF document, I get to choose from any of the templates here or I can modify it to meet my own needs. So let's say for example I wanted to create a 4x5 contact sheet. Now you'll notice that nothing changed, but let's select all of our images and then I'll click to refresh the preview and Bridge will go ahead and make this PDF file for me. Of course there are lots of different options here, I don't have time to go through them all, but I will show you that in the preferences, we'll go to the output preference here because there's a solo mode for output panel behavior that I really like because otherwise I find that I'm scrolling through all of these different options here. So instead, I'm going to choose to use the solo mode, click OK, and now you'll notice that once I'm finished setting up my document, so for example, let's pick US paper, um, 8.5 by 11, um, my background, Maybe we are creating this as a PDF to send to a client. We're not necessarily printing it. So let's go ahead and change that from white to black. Of course, that is going to present us a little bit of a problem with our text. So when I move to layouts, you'll notice that in solo mode, layouts will open and document automatically closes. Really nice, so I don't have to scroll through all of my images. All right, the layout is fine. I'll go to overlays. In this case, we've got our file name and extension, but I want to change the color. Otherwise, it's going to be black type on a black background, which is not going to be very legible. All right, let's refresh the preview and see what that looks like. Excellent, that's looking good. We can choose our playback options. In this case, um, I don't really want it to loop after the last page um, or advance. I don't want this to be a self-running slideshow. I'm really just creating a contact sheet here. And finally, we can add a watermark if we want to, and we can choose to view the PDF after we save it. Now, I don't really need to save it. What I want to do instead is show you very quickly the web photo gallery.
So Web Photo Gallery is now built right in here. We can choose our different templates here. So let's go ahead and choose a flash gallery here. And we will refresh the preview so that we're not looking at this PDF file anymore, but instead we're looking at our Web Photo Gallery. And again, almost everything in here can be changed. So all the site information, so instead of calling it Adobe Web Gallery, let's call it Ghost Town. And the collection title, we can go ahead and call this Bodie State Park. And we could continue changing all of these options. This one's a great one right here, this contact name. So for example, I could put my name, and then we can go ahead and link that to my email. And of course, when I hit Refresh Preview, it'll go ahead and change all that text so we can preview what this is going to look like. In addition, we could change the color palette here. We can change all sorts of appearance options. If I don't want my thumbnails on the left-hand side, I can choose to lay them out paginated or scrolling or not have them at all in the slideshow only. For now, I'll just leave this alone, but we need to look at the Create Gallery because you can now upload your images directly from Bridge using the FTP options right down here. We're almost finished, but there are a few new things that I also want to show you. And let's take a look inside the Mine folder. One of the things you'll notice is that I have three images right here that are a panorama. And in fact, I have two more images right down here. Well, you're probably aware of the fact that you could stack images. So for example, if I had this image and then variations on that image and I didn't want to see all the variations, I could group them as a stack. So you could do that in previous versions of Bridge. But what you couldn't do was tell Bridge to go out and look for panoramas and HDR images and automatically stack them for you. So what Bridge is doing right now is it's looking at the metadata and it's looking at the thumbnails for the images and you'll notice that it found those two panoramas and stacked them for me. But that's not all. If I then go under Tools, under Photoshop, you'll notice that we have two new features. One, we can load files into Photoshop layers, which is great. So if you've got a bunch of images and you want to put them all in the same document, each is their own layer, you can do that. But we can also process collections in Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, and what Bridge is going to do is it's going to hand off those images to Photoshop, the ones that it automatically determined were panoramas. In this case, they were panoramas. They could have also been HDR images, but I didn't have any of those. So it looked at the panoramas, and it's going to hand off all of the necessary files, and it's going to use Photoshop CS4's improved panorama options so that it creates panoramas, and when it's finished, it's going to hand those back over to Bridge. And here we are in Bridge. You can see those finished panoramas. Okay, a few last things. When I'm in a folder like Ghost Town and I have a lot of subfolders in here, sometimes I like to see a flattened view. And that used to be an icon over here in the filter panel, but it is no longer there. Instead, if you go under the View menu, you can choose to show items from subfolders. And what that does is it basically gives you a flattened view. Certainly, I can see the folder here, but I can see all of the contents of all of my subfolders and scroll through them as if they're not in the folders, when in reality, they actually are. So see, again, it's not a real folder. I've got the little circle with the slash. If I want to see a real folder, I would go back to the ghost town. OK, a few more preferences. I'm going to use Command-K or Control-K, which is the keyboard shortcut for preferences. If you're working with video, you now have the option to play your audio files automatically when they're previewed and loop audio files when they're previewed here in Bridge. If you don't want those, all you need to do is uncheck those options. If you're working with Photoshop Lightroom, you might want to take a look at the keywording area because both Bridge and Lightroom support hierarchical keywords. So if you want those to move back and forth in their hierarchy, go ahead and tell it to read hierarchical keywords and also write hierarchical keywords. In the labels area, this is what I mentioned earlier. Remember when I was saying I could just star my images by tapping one through five? That's because I have this unchecked, the option to require the command key. Of course, on Windows, that would be the control key to apply the labels and ratings. When this is on, you'll see I need to add that keyboard modifier, so I leave that off. We've moved the cache preferences here, so this is where um, you would turn on to automatically export your cache to folders when possible. This is fantastic because 
I don't want bridge if it gets above my cache size here to have to re-render those, so I'm going to automatically export the cache to the folders when possible. All right, excellent. Well, that covered a lot of the new features in Adobe Bridge CS4. And that wraps up this episode. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you again on the next episode of The Complete Picture.